a small neighborhood at the outskirts of Jerusalem's old city. It's home to about 20,000 Palestinians. They call it Silwan. But to the growing number of Jewish settlers, the neighborhood is Ir David, city of David. It's of a special importance to the Jewish people because that is our ancestral heritage. And so everything we find, the entire story of the city of David, is really our story. The settlers are backed by an organization called Elad, whose aim is to strengthen the Jewish presence in this Palestinian neighborhood. Over the last 15 years, nearly half of Elad's donated funding has come from offshore companies in the Caribbean, from an anonymous donor. But a leak of bank documents has found the man behind these companies, Chelsea Football Club's owner, Israel's richest man, Roman Abramovich. I'm in shock. BBC Arabic investigates. The Sumerine family are on their way to the Jerusalem District Court. They're fighting to stay in their home in East Jerusalem. The family are Palestinian. Their legal battle in Israeli courts has been going on for almost 30 years. The Sumerines have to prove to the court they have the right to stay in the house members of their family have lived in since 1959. The biblical city of Jerusalem, captured by King David over 3,000 years ago, is here according to an organization known as Elad. Hello everybody and welcome to Jerusalem once again, the city of David. It's amazing to have you back with us. My name is Daron Spillman. I'm the director of global communications in the city of David. You can imagine we're climbing underneath ancient Jerusalem right now. Elad is short for To the City of David. It's an organization whose stated mission is to strengthen the Jewish connection to Jerusalem. When I came here and spoke with both local residents, Arab and Jewish, and other people here, I realized that this is the site of King David. He's known as King David in English, David in Hebrew, Daoud in Islam, and that this is an incredible opportunity for four billion people throughout the world to connect to the original site of the city of David. When I heard that story, I left my own career in high tech and have dedicated my life to this area. To the millions who have visited the city of David, Elad presents itself as an archaeological organization focused on telling the story of ancient Jerusalem. The city of David is the actual underground city of Jerusalem, and our mission is to really reveal that and bring it uh, to be explored by the world and experienced by the world. You know that 3,000 years ago, the same view we're seeing right now, King David saw. He could get up every morning with his coffee, walk out to the porch, and see this beautiful scenery. David, King David from the Bible, he went under the walls and overtook this and took it for the first time for, for the Jewish community. So that's pretty cool. 
but there is a debate about some of the links made between the city of David, the Bible and historical fact. And archaeological digs on occupied territory are governed by much debated laws. Israel could be breaking international law by allowing a lad to carry out exploratory work in Silwan. Israel doesn't consider the area to be occupied, and a lad say it's necessary to carry out the work in order to protect Jewish cultural heritage. Elad has been criticised for the less advertised part of their mission, strengthening the Jewish connection to Jerusalem through Jewish settlement. The United States condemns the recent occupation of residential buildings in the Palestinian neighbourhood of Silwan in East Jerusalem by individuals who are associated with an organisation whose agenda, by definition, stokes tensions between Israelis and Palestinians. Shahar Shiloh spent over a decade working at a senior level in Elad as their marketing director. He helped the City of David make it into all the top guidebooks. Sheldon Edelson, Roman Abramovich, Sachkanim and Movile Datkal. בדרנים, סיינפלד, צריך לחשוב על אנשים שאני לקחתי באופן אישי, חברי קונגרס, חברי פרלמנט, מלכים, נשיאים. בריכת השילוח החשמונאי... שחר שילו ויתנס פרסט הנד, the rapid rise of a lad. He even wrote a PhD about them, so knows the organization inside out. נקראתי אל הדגל, במובן הציורי של המילה, אל עיר דוד, משום שהם באותה תקופה בדיוק עברו מהפך דרמטי, נקרא לזה מחובבנות למקצוענות. From their launch in 1986 till 2005, Shiloh says that settling Jewish families in Silwan was a lad's main activity. In 2005, Shiloh says, Elad changed their strategy. Forever. 2005 was a game-changing year for a lad. Big money started pouring in via offshore companies based in the British Virgin Islands. It made up 65% of the total funds donated that year. Elad did not comment on whether tourism was a way to enable more Jewish settlement in the area. In 1967, during the Six-Day War, Israel occupied the West Bank and East Jerusalem. Very soon after the war, Israel extended Israeli law to the area of East Jerusalem. And in 1980, the Israeli government moved to formally bring the whole of Jerusalem and its holy sites under its control. There are 220,000 Jewish settlers in East Jerusalem, living among at least 341,000 Palestinians. Under international law, the area is considered to be occupied territory and the settlements are deemed illegal. Israel does not accept this view and neither does the Trump administration. Hagit Ofran has been opposing settlements for years as part of the organization Peace Now. The Sumerians live right next door to a large city of David. They even share a fence. Hagit Ofran is at their home for a conference call with pro-Palestinian activists ahead of the family's next court appearance. אז אז שלום לכולם ותודה רבה רבה שהצטרפתם אלינו היום לשיחה הזאת 
בואו נתחיל, אחמד, אם אתה רוצה להציג את עצמך, להסביר איפה אנחנו, מי גר פה. שלום, אני אחמד סמרין מסילואן. אני בן המשפחה, אנחנו שלוש משפחות בבית גדול, שלוש דירות. אני אבל מג'וזת וג'ית עהון, כן, ג'וז יעיש מעמו, ליהו אלחאג' מוסא סומריין. توفت مرته وصرت أنا أدير بالي عليه وأطعمي يعني أطبخ وأطعمي و... وأدير بالي عليه أخدم جوزي كان يحمم وكان يخضع الدكتور ويطلع معه ويجي كان يقول لي هذا البيت إليك يا, يا سيدي يعني من بعدي هذا إلي كل جوزك البيت فقال الله عيان زمان يا ليت الزمان يعود يوما The Sumerian house was claimed by the State of Israel under the controversial absentee law in 1987. This law gives the government the right to seize the properties of Palestinians who fled or were expelled during times of conflict. In 1991, the Israeli government then sold the Sumerian house to Himanuta, a subsidiary of the Jewish National Fund. One of the JNF's stated objectives is to buy and develop land on behalf of the Jewish people. With funding and support from NGOs and the Palestinian Authority, the Sumerian family have been fighting to keep their home ever since. We asked Elad if they had any part to play in this case. While the legal case over the home, which has been going on for more than 30 years, is being carried out by him and Nuta, it's obviously of great interest to, it, uh, to us because it's directly located within a few feet of our visitor center. But since that interview, BBC News Arabic has obtained new evidence that suggests Elad has more than just an interest. In August 2020, Himanuta submitted a letter to court that David Berry, founder of Elad, had sent them back in 1991. Berry lists various land plots in Silwan, including that of the Sumerian House, and writes, We will handle the eviction of the properties from their current holders. For the purpose of eviction, we will pay all legal fees and all payments to the holders, whether in a legal settlement or by court order. A Himanuta stamp confirms, we approve the above. Asked by the BBC whether they were still funding the case, Ilad did not respond. And neither did Himanuta. יש לנו שאלה מעדי ששואלת אם קק"ל יצליחו חס וחלילה לקחת את הבית, מה, מה תעשו, לאיפה תלכו? עדיין האמת לא חשבנו על זה שכל החיים שלנו פה, אנחנו עדיין מאמינים שאנחנו לא נצא מהבית. לא יודע, זו שאלה קצת... <laughs> זה <laughs> מפחיד, <laughs> לא יודע. כולם הכירו את מה שאנחנו מכנים בחיוך פארק המים של ירושלים, אותה נקבע יפהפייה שחצובה שנים מהתנ״ך והולכים בה בתוך המים. יש ממצאים ארכיאולוגיים, אבל בראשית הדרך בהתחלה הם אפילו לא משולטים. אין שירותים, אין חניה, אין הצללה, אין מוקד קבלת פנים. אני באתי לדוד אלה ואמרתי לו, ידידי היקר, אנחנו צריכים את התיירות האמיתית, לא רק את היהודית. זאת אומרת, אתה מנהל שיווק, מה שנקרא, money is no concern, תגיד כמה אתה צריך. ואנחנו נביא. כשאני מצאתי את עיר דוד, לא היה בה תייר אחד מחו"ל. אני השארתי את עיר דוד כשעזבתי ב-2016 עם סדר גודל של 200 פלוס אלף תיירים מחו"ל בשנה. Over the years, the total number of visitors to a large city of David has increased dramatically, and some never left. There's also been a gradual but steady growth in the number of Jewish settlers who've been settled by a lad in Silwan. All this growth has cost a lot of money, and a lad relies heavily on donations to fund its work. כל עמותה מחויבת בשקיפות לגבי תרומות מגובה מסוים. עמותת אלעד פרסמה מן רשימת תורמים, אבל שלא אומרת כלום. Elad does list many donors that are easy to identify, both individuals and organizations. But nearly half of Elad's donations between 2005 and 2018 came from just four BVI-based companies. Cantley Investments Limited, Farley, Ovington and Lyston Holdings Limited. They were all registered on the same day in the British Virgin Islands. The way these companies are structured makes it impossible for the public to know who's behind them. The names of these four companies also appear in a set of bank documents leaked to BuzzFeed News, 
They shared them with the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists and the BBC. In the documents, banks report information about financial transactions and ownership of companies. The name Roman Abramovich appears again and again. He's named as the ultimate beneficial owner of three companies and controls the fourth. Those companies have donated more than $100 million to a lad between 2005 and 2018. That makes Roman Abramovich the single biggest donor to the Settler organization. The donations from his companies, which started in 2005, have enabled the lad to become the organization they are today. In 2007, these companies were responsible for almost 90% of the lad's donations. In that year, the majority of donations were used to fund various projects of development and settlement in the city of David. In some cases, settlement in Silwan means the eviction of a Palestinian family. Elad has told the BBC they abide by the laws and regulations Israel set for non-profit organisations, including in terms of transparency requirements. And on the question of whether Roman Abramovich is a donor to Elad, they say... It's our policy to respect the privacy of our donors. Uh, one can very easily walk around the city of David and see the signs of the donors that have, have decided to put their names there. Mohamed Dahla has been the Sumerian's lawyer for 10 years. The Sumerian case is not unique. Elad has been linked to numerous evictions, and donations to Elad have enabled them to expand their footprint in Sawan. תורם זכותו להגיד, אני רוצה שבכסף שלי הזה תממנו חפירות ארכיאולוגיות, ואז זה ילך לטובת מטרות מסוימות. תורמים אחרים אומרים, אני, מבחינתי, אני קונה את חלקי בגן עדן בזה שאני גואל אדמות. זאת, זה השימוש במינוח, כשאתה איש דתי, לאומי, המינוח הוא לגואל אדמות. אתה גואל את האדמות האלה, אתה מחזיר אותן לבעלות יהודית. According to Peace Now's research, Elad owns and runs tourist sites on this land and has settled Jewish families in these houses. The Israeli government permits and supports Elad's work, both the settling and the digging. In 2016, the UN Security Council deemed settlement activity in occupied East Jerusalem a flagrant violation of international law by Israel. But Israel disputes this they do not consider East Jerusalem to be occupied territory. International law has many different views and many different actors. There are many nations and countries who in fact support Israeli sovereignty over this area. Only the United States, Guatemala and Honduras recognize Israel's sovereignty over the entire city of Jerusalem. Roman Abramovich is a private man. It's been hard to find people willing to speak publicly about him for the BBC. He's well known for his charitable giving. A spokesman for Mr. Abramovich has told the BBC he's a committed and generous supporter of Israeli and Jewish civil society. And over the past 20 years, he's donated over $500 million to support healthcare, science, education, and Jewish communities in Israel and around the world. But until now, Mr. Abramovich has never been officially associated with any donations to Elad. I'm in shock. Because he doesn't stare like this in the public. Roman Bronfman co-wrote a book about the impact of a million Russian migrants moving to Israel. All of the Jews in the United States, 
נוטים ימינה במפה הישראלית הפוליטית. יש מעטים מאוד, וגם בין האוליגרכים שנמצאים במרכז ליברלי, שאלה עד כמה ימינה. In 2018, Mr. Abramovich was granted citizenship in Israel after facing long delays to his UK visa application. רוב האוליגרכים הם ממוצא יהודי וזכאי חוק השבות. הם רואים בישראל, וזה חשוב להדגיש, סוג של ארץ מקלט. העיקר בכל התביעה הזאת הוא העוול הנוראי שנגרם למשפחת סומרין. תודה. גם אני הולך, אני שכחתי אפילו ה... שכחתי שהאישה ילדה. Later that day, the Sumerian family learnt they had lost their appeal. They were given six weeks to leave their home. I can tell you today that all the houses of the houses that are on the side of the David are on the side of the David, from the side of the David. All the houses of the David are on the side of the David. And many, many, many of them are still living in the Palestinian. They can also be for five years, they can also be for ten years. Elad didn't respond to questions about ownership of houses in historic city of David, and they say that all of their property in this area has been obtained fairly and legally under Israeli law. The city of David is a project that involves also the revitalization of life in Jerusalem. We believe that both Jews and Arabs, Christians, Muslims, everybody under Israeli law is entitled to buy homes here. No Palestinian has ever been removed from their home in the city of David without due process, without a court, without them being able to present their case and other sides. The problem is in the laws that are applied. And after that, قد نواجه المشاكل مع المحاكم هي علاقة مجموعة إثنية عرقية تسن القوانين لمصلحتها ومجموعة إثنية عرقية شعب آخر يعاني من هذه القوانين إلعاد's strategy seems to be working For many in Israel and around the world Silwan has become the city of David As Elad has established itself, Israeli government support and income from ticket sales have risen. And donations from Abramovich were overtaken by donations from US-based Friends of Ir David in 2011. Oh my golly! Everyone... I can think of no better place than the city of David to express that the United States knows what the Jewish people have known for 3,000 years, that Jerusalem is the historic capital of Israel. The Trump administration's recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel exacerbated widespread protests in Gaza and beyond. 58 Palestinians were reported killed by Israeli forces and over 2,000 injured that day of the embassy opening alone. U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman is a strong supporter of Israeli settlements and has taken part in an opening ceremony at the City of David. And in 2020, when President Trump announced his peace plan, brokered by his son-in-law, it named many of Elad's sites as historical or spiritual places in need of protection, all of which are in occupied territory. Byzantine, Roman, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, Palestinian, Jordanian, Israeli, Silwan's story is complicated. But within 30 years, with the support of Israel's richest man, Elad has managed to shift the narrative to their version of the story. <laughs>